The next few days will be critical as House Speaker Kevin McCarthy will count the votes to get the bill across the finish line. So I want to bring in Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace from South Carolina, who you just heard there has been an outspoken opponent of this bill. Congresswoman, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me this evening. This bipartisan deal struck over the weekend has concessions from both sides, uh, yet you say that your fellow Republicans were, quote, outsmarted by the White House's negotiating team. What's missing from this deal that would turn your vote around? Well, actual spending cuts are what's missing because in this bill, there's actually no cap on the debt ceiling for the next two years. It actually adds $4 trillion to the debt based on the spending that is in the bill. And the other thing is that they are saying the clawbacks, the rescissions, getting unspent COVID funds from the state, that that's a cut. That's not a cut. That's not what the American people are asking for. 63% of Americans want to see the federal government be more responsible with the money that it spends. They want to see spending cuts. And this bill, does not do it. What kind of cuts would you like to see? Well, any kind of spending cuts at this point, we need to go back to pre-COVID levels. We saw record spending, emergency spending, uh, upwards of 40% or $2 trillion over the last, uh, 2019 to 2023. Uh, we're averaging about $6 trillion a year in spending. We need to go back to pre-COVID levels, which is about $4.5 trillion. We need to show the American people that we will spend what we bring in. That's what I'm trying to teach my teenage kids, to live within your means. The federal government should do the same. You're part of a growing coalition of Republicans who have publicly stated that you will not support this deal as is. Economists, as you well know, predict dire consequences globally if, this, if the U.S. doesn't pass this bill. Are you willing to let the nation go into default? We're not going to go into default. That is just a scare tactic by the left. We have enough revenue coming in to cover our interest on the debt. That's not what's at stake here. If we were to not pass this bill, and I think this bill passes tomorrow, but if that were to happen, if we were to not pass the bill, we would just have to prioritize our spending by putting priority, obviously, on the interest on the debt and maybe not pay for a few wasteful programs. I mean, that's how this works. Uh, we don't need to get the, the economy. Uh, we don't need to, you know, really scare people or use that as a scare tactic, because that's not what's going to happen. Is here. it a scare tactic from the left? I mean, uh, Janet Yellen has said very clearly that as of June 5th, we'd run out of money that we wouldn't be able to pay our bills. Well, again, we have enough revenue coming in to cover our bills, starting with the interest on the debt, and we would have to prioritize our spending. If that means a couple of wasteful programs don't get, don't get uh, paid for, I'm okay with that. I think most Americans would be. America wants us to cut spending. Congressman Dan Bishop has said nobody could have done a worse job about Kevin McCarthy and the negotiating team, and has said that this deal could be grounds for Speaker McCarthy's removal. Do you agree with him, and would you vote to make that happen? Calls for remo removal are premature at this juncture, but I'll just say this. I, I've been up here two and a half years. I, this is one of the worst bills I've ever seen. Uh, things that we were told as members from leadership ended up not being true. And I'm not going to lie to the American people. I'm not going to lie to South Carolinians. I'm also not going to lie to my colleagues up here, which is why I read the bill multiple times uh, over. I read it twice. And some of it, I couldn't believe the fine print. I said, you've got to be kidding me. I want to switch gears for a moment. You serve in a swing district. And on certain issues, you push back against your party and have called some stances too extreme, specifically on abortion rights and gun control mm -hmm. legislation. Uh, you've said that your party will lose seats with extreme abortion bans and lack of progress on gun control measures. What are you doing to try to convince fellow Republicans to move to the center of these issues. I've been a strong, outspoken advocate for women. I want to show that I support women, I support women's rights, and I support the right to life. The two are not mutually exclusive. I have multiple pieces of legislation that address the rape kit backlog that we have today. I'm, I've got multiple bills addressing adoption services, foster care, uh, child care, birth control, et cetera. We need to show that we care about women if we want to get serious about winning in 2024. When it comes to violence, unfortunately, South Carolina is is no stranger to mass shootings. In fact, my kids and I were near a mass shooting a few weeks ago. I, I'm a pro 2A advocate. I have seven guns. I carry one with me because of the threats I receive as a member of Congress. But I also know that we can do things like strengthen our background checks, have an amber alert system. So if you're near a mass shooting, you can be forewarned, maybe not to leave the premises or to take cover wherever you are. There are a lot of middle ground, common sense measures, whether, whether we're talking about violence or we're talking about women's issues, we can find that middle ground. Congresswoman Nancy Mace, always appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.